My name is Jerry Estrada and today I'm going to cook something special from Puerto Rico. It's called Acapurias. Acapuria is a, is a Puerto Rican fritter and it's stuffed with a special meats. I'm going to explain that all that in detail but first I want to tell you Acapuria is a really really loved uh, food from Puerto Rico. If people go to Puerto Rico they, they like to eat it all the time and they're here. Uh, a lot of people that are away from the island they come over here and they know about Acapurias they want to eat. It's really tasty. I definitely recommend this plate. But first of all, the acapuria is, um, is basically a, a fritter and it's going to be divided in two parts. You're going to have what's called a mixture. In Spanish, it's called la masa. And that mixture is going to be composed of green bananas. You're going to have plantain. And you're going to have this, which is called yautia. Uh, these three, I'm going to mix it. I'm going to show you in detail. I'm going to peel them first. So first of all, they'll peel them. I'm going to get them ready and then I'm going to come back again. And also, the inside is what I'm going to refer to as the filler. The filler is, once this is the, the mixture is done, we're going to fill it in, I'm going to show you shortly. And that filler is made of either ground beef, it could be picadillo, and then like this one, this we've already made, we already made it. Picadillo, you could put just ground beef, some onions, a little bit of olives, and do it to taste. That's just enough, a little green peppers. Uh, also in Puerto Rico, they do it, they fill it with pork. They cut the pork up and they cook it the same way. Or sometimes we use crab meat. In Puerto Rico, they call it jueyes. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start peeling these, getting these ready. And then I'm going to show you how to make the batter. And then I'm going to, how to assemble them. I'll be right back. Go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cut the bananas and how to peel this a little bit. I'm just going to show you a little bit of the beginning. And I'm going to do it on my own time. And then I'm going to show you the end product. And then also want to mention this is the grater, a guayo. And this is where we're going to take the bananas. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that in just a moment. For, for, for first, I'm going to show you how to peel the bananas. First of all, I'm going to use about four right now, but you could use four, you could use maybe six and one plantain or two plantains. The reason you want to use green bananas is because they're going to be harder and you're going to cut all these areas right here, right off. And I'm going to cut. A good piece here, the ends. You cut the ends, set them aside. Cut the ends here. Okay, then go ahead and get the plantain. Do pretty much the same thing with that. Cut the ends, perfect. And then you're going to go ahead and take another small knife. And you see this ridge right here? That's where I would take a small cut, measure with my finger, just like that, so it won't go so deep. I don't want to go too much into the banana. And can you see that right there good? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go right down like that. And you wanna take, I take, people do it with their fingers. I do with a spoon. It's my little secret. And my spoon, I just get my spoon, I just wedge it right in there. And next thing you know. It's not a secret anymore. It comes out like this. I cut it too deep, so just don't do that. But there, so you see how I'm peeling it nice and it comes out the whole peel. Turn it around, peel the other way. Basically, that's down, and that's one peeled banana. I won't. I won't do. The, I'll do the other ones off off the screen. Get nice and clean. Get one nice banana there. All this stuff out of the way. And we're going to do the same thing with the plantain. And then with this, we're going to just use a normal peeler. And uh, give me a few minutes. I'll be right back after it's ready. Okay. To make the bla the batter. There's two ways of doing it. The traditional way is using this instrument, it's called a guayu. This is a grater. And basically you take, you, you take it and you just go use one of the mixing bowls and just go ahead and just kind of just keep on doing this until you get all that nice and mellow all the way out. It comes out and there's your, there's your, um, your batter. And the other way is the modern way is using the food processor. It's a lot quicker, the consistency is a little different but it's still good. But today, I am going to go also, I'm going to use a food process because it's been a little quicker. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is, the moment I'm doing this, I'm just gonna take a couple pieces and I'll start blending it in. A lot of people ask me, why is it that you use, you can't just use green bananas? You, you can use green bananas as the base for the batter, but you wanna use plantain because the plantain is stronger and it, it gives a stronger consistency so that when you're building the acapuri, as you'll see later, it'll keep it together when you fill it in with the meats and you put it to fry. So that's going to be the reason why we use a plantain to make the, the masa, the batter, stronger. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just put a couple of these here. Just real quick. Our little doggies here. Hi. <laughs> and then we'll cut these up in a couple pieces so that this doesn't overwork too much. And I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, lid. Where's the lid? Excuse me. And take a lid. Okay. And I start a couple of these pieces in there. I'm going to go ahead and keep on doing the batter, and I'll be right back. Give me a second, I'll be right back. So, uh, okay, this is basically it. I finished, and I'm going to show you the consistency. Can you see that there? Mm -hmm. That's a real good consistency. That's exactly what you want. See that? That's really nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer it over to the mixing bowl. And one thing you want to do is you want to, like, Pat it down like that, make sure it's not clumpy. If you find a little clumpy, like, ah, you see there's a little piece there, I'm gonna take care of that just a second. I'll take it right back to the processor, pause it a few more times, because you want it to be nice and creamy like this, see? This one, a little clump, clumpy, so good. Let me see this one, so you test it, you see this here? You just make sure it's, there's no big clumps or anything. If there is, that's okay. Just bring it back over here. That looks real good. So, put this right back. Blend it in for maybe another minute. Not even. that it's all nice and good consistency see so now that rest I'll go ahead and put it in my mixing bowl shake it all out I don't want to lose it. not even a little bit this is all going to be real real yummy Get that out, and then the rest of it. Okay, now, basically, you've got the batter here, which is called in Spanish, la masa. La masa, now I'm gonna go ahead, you see there's nice, perfect. Mix it up a little bit more. I'm gonna put a little salt to it, not too much. Just like a little bit to taste, just give it a little bit of flavor, just a little bit. And I'm going to use a little coloring. Uh, it's a achote, uh, it's a, it has a chote and it's called sazon. It gives it color and it also has a little bit of other little spices on it. It's good stuff. I mix it in here, it gives it a nice color. And then I'm going to mix it. See it there? And when I mix it, it's going to give it a nice little color. That's really pretty. Okay. So now, while I mix this, I'm gonna tell you that the, the filler is, in, in my particular case today, uh, we, we had cooked this picadillo the day before and we had some leftovers. So this picadillo is basically ground beef, onions, olives, a little pimentos, 
garlic, and we all cooked it and made a normal picadillo. But this is going to also serve today as the filler over here. Now mind you, you can also use uh, pork, like I said in the beginning, and you can also use crab meat. In Puerto Rico, they do a lot of that crab meat, it's called quays, and that's a, one of the favorites. So we got the mac bag over here pretty good. And then while I do this, I mix it up really good. The next thing I want to do is I am going to add a little bit more green peppers to the filler. I'm going to stir all that up and I'm going to do I'm going to make this, this ready to assemble the acapulia. So I'll see you in two seconds. Okay, here's the fun part. Here again, look at the, uh, the batter. All nice and creamy like that, all nice and mixed in. And then look at how the filler is. I added some more green peppers, like I said, and I stirred it all up, and that's that's basically leftover picadillo. Look at that, and that's basically going to be the filler now. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut. You can use either wax paper, you can use aluminum foil, uh, parchment paper, any of those you can use. And what I normally do is I just do a little trick: is I grab it in my hand here, and I put a little oil. I dab some oil on the paper so that the batter doesn't stick to the paper. Mix a little bit of oil like that here. That's, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to have oil, a good amount of oil where you almost cover the uh, acapuria. And I have it at medium to, to high. And uh, I want it to be not, not too, too, too hot. So what I want to do is I want to assemble it. And I'm going to basically, this is the how the acapuria is actually born. And in here, and by doing this here, you you consistently keep it the same size. So once you have the mass there, you make a little well in the middle, something like that, and you come over here and you get the the filler, the meat, and you put the meat right in the middle. Can you see they were good? A little bit meat, nice and meaty. All right, there. Then you take it and you get a little bit more batter. You put it on top, just a little bit like that, and then you close it. Basically, you're covering the acapuria and you're sealing all the meat inside. Make sure it's nice and put inside there. And then you can shape it up some better. You shape it up a little better, like this. And you start giving it the acapuria look. That's basically how you give it the shape. There's a nice little acapuria right there in the making. See that this little oil is a little trick. So it doesn't, the, the batter doesn't stick to the paper. You can use also uh, like butter, melted butter, or you can also use uh, those sprays that are like Pam or one of those that are buttered up also for non-sticky stuff. There it is. There it goes. And what you want to do is you want to try and make sure that the, the water is, the, the oil is right. I do a little test. I just drop a little piece of this here inside. You see that? How is that oil is perfect. Now we want to go. Go ahead and come back over here and, and drop this in. There goes one. And as you go, you just oil, you just kind of cover it up a little bit. You want to cut you want to cook it in one side for about seven minutes. And then turn it around and Maybe seven minutes. So really between 10 to 14 minutes and that's it. You don't want to overcook it. Now you want to keep it medium. You don't want it to get too, too hot because it's going to cook on the outside too much and but not cook any inside. So this is a real nice temperature for it. In the meantime, I'll just go ahead and I'll just assemble another one. Put a little bit more oil, just to the, just wet it up and nice and keep it nice and oiled. And I'll just do it all over again. There we go, my hand. And here you go, giving it the shape again. 
I do open the wall in the middle. And as I do that, come back, put the filler right in the middle. I like it with meat. <laughs> and here you go again, and then just take a little more batter, put it like right in the middle, and then you proceed to cover. Give it the shape again. Lay it down, shape it up a little more. Looks good. Come back. And okay, now I'm going to show you here. You go ahead and see how it's already cooking in the, underneath. That's perfect. That's, see that? That's when you want to go ahead and turn it. You want to turn it, cook it another five minutes on the other side, and I'll show you once it's finished. Okay, this one's been cooking pretty much. It's almost done. And you, this is, see how it's that, that next color? You don't want it to get any darker because it's going to burn. Look, that's perfect inside. Now, look. Can you get a good shot? See that? That's nice. That's a nice. This one's coming through real nice, too. So, what you want to do is, once this one's ready, just take this one out. Have a little container of this with some uh, paper towel. Or you could use one of these screeners. And just let it set on there so that you leave some of the oil, the excess oil, or uh, just go ahead and put it in here. And I'm going to wait until this one is cooked. And there you go. I'm going to take this one out and I'll be right back. And I'm going to cut them for you, show you how it looks inside. Okay, guys, here is the end product. This is your Puerto Rican Acapuria. You can cut it, let it cool down a little because it's really hot. And uh, let me see if it tastes good. I don't know. Let's see. Mmm. You hear it crunchy? This is an authentic mm, Puerto Rican Acapulco. Bon appetit. If you like it, just like. Thank you for watching. I'm Jerry Estrada. And you can look me up at. Uh, Cooking with Jerry Estrada. Have a nice night.